Okay, hi guys, once again. My name is Jacek and as a member of the Meet and Code team, I'd just like to briefly introduce you to the initiative of Meet and Code and just say a few quick words about the project. But uh, first, a very warm welcome from our partners, uh, House Stiftens, Tech Soup Europe, SAP and German Federal Ministry of the Interior. Uh, and now we can begin and welcome to our second Meet and Code online seminar of uh, 2021. If you're new uh, to the initiative, just let me tell you a bit about Meet and Code, what we do and who we are. And Meet and Code was launched in 2017 uh, to assist nonprofit organizations in providing digital skills education to young people aged between eight and 24 uh, years old across Europe. And now five years on, Meet and Code has reached more than 175 young people uh, across 35 European countries, uh, giving them the digital literacy and coding skills to thrive in, let's say, tomorrow's competitive digital economy. And Meet and Code, what do we do? We award, we award micro grants uh, of as much as 500 euros to local nonprofits. Uh, to facilitate the workshops and the classes they deliver. And many in our audience today will undoubtedly be recipients of those grants. And to answer the question, why have we launched the Mirecon online seminar series? Uh, the online seminar series is just an extension of the Meet and Code commitment to help nonprofits uh, become more in initiative, innovative, and creative in the work they do. Uh, they're designed to simply inspire all of you our Meet and Code community with learnings and insights from great SAP uh, expert speakers and coaches uh, in the exciting world of IT and coding. Uh, but it's high time to introduce uh, our expert today. We are delighted to have Philip Engel Martin with us today. And Philip is the Central Security Advisor uh, within Technology and Innovation Board Area at SAP. And in his role, he consults development teams on how to apply secure software development and operation practice. Uh, he has also led the security work stream of the Corona Warn app, uh, which is Germany's COVID-19 privacy uh, preserving tracing application. Uh, furthermore, uh, he's a security evangelist and mentor for SAP Capture the Flag events, uh, where he guides participants through cybersecurity challenges. And as I said, in 2018, uh, he was awarded most supportive hacker for SAP uh, Capture the Flag. And I know since it would be so much more interesting to uh, hear directly from Philip, uh, I just want to say that we are honored to have you here with us today. Uh, and over to you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here today. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. I hope that you can see then everything fine. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, that everyone needs a hacker's mindset. Um, just to have this at the very beginning, uh, I will share some ideas and practices during my presentation, during this session today that may be illegal if exploited. Those practices and ideas are shown to only serve as an example of different types of flaws or practices. I'm not encouraging you to exploit them, to gain personal advantage out of them or whatsoever. Sharing these ideas and practices is not for blaming or malicious intent, but it's exclusively for educational purposes. Please keep that in mind. I'm going to talk a little bit about who am I and why I'm here. I will talk a little bit about the wording hacker. What does that mean? What is the definition of hacker? How is it perceived and what I believe it is? Then I'd like to take you with me to do some smaller hacks, which are not technical, but kind of different. You will see that. And then I will tell you why you should start hacking, why you should start to become a hacker. And at the end, if you do have questions, I hopefully got answers. So this is me. Um, sometimes I'm talking on uh, events about catching flags, like um, playing the capture the flag 
um, SAP's capture the flag as capture the flag mentor, as you can see here on the picture. But in my daily business, I'm the director of security advisory at technology and innovation. The technology innovation board area at SAP um, owns responsibility for example, the SAP business technology platform. I'm supporting colleagues in applying secure development mechanisms, um, advising them how to proceed with specific um, requests and furthermore. Aside that, I'm acting as security evangelist within SAP and also outside of SAP. So this is why I'm here today, for example. And I'm of course a Capture the Flag mentor. Um, Capture the Flag is a security education platform we developed inside of SAP. Um, it's a mechanism where you do challenges and as a kind of price you get a flag, a so-called flag, it's a string. Um, with that, you can prove that you solved the challenge uh, successfully. In my free time, I'm volunteer firefighter at the fire department in Waldorf. Um, we are having roughly 180 to 250 alarms a year, means I'm uh, yeah, on an alert every second or third day. This is me. I'm here today to tell you about hacking and what that mean. And with that, we come to the definition of what is a hacker. When you go online and you search for that, you ask Google, please define me hacker. You get a result like that. So the result is saying, a hacker is a person who uses computers to gain unauthorized access to data or an enthusiastic and skillful computer programmer or user, or a person or thing that hacks or cuts roughly. I don't know what they mean with that, but I completely disagree with this definition. There's a second one down here saying that, what does it mean to be a hacker? And there they are saying, a hacker is an individual who uses computer networking or other skills to overcome a technical problem. The term hacker might refer to anyone with technical skills, but it often refers to a person who uses his or her abilities to gain unauthorized access to systems or networks in order to commit crimes. So this is a very, very negative interpretation of the word hacker, in my opinion, and I completely disagree. Let's look further. WikiHow, thinking like a hacker. This is what we're going to do today. And when you have a closer look there, saying the enemy of the hacker is boredom. Yeah, okay. And authoritarian figures who use censorship and secrecy to strangle the freedom of information. Monotonous work keeps the hacker from hacking. Well, this might be true for me, but I would not agree with that in general. This is not a suitable definition of a hacker for me personally. So let's find a better definition of what hacking means. On the left side of the slide, you can see mechanisms that relates to the, the activity of hacking, to the skill set, or even better mindset of hacking problem solving. When it comes to hacking, hackers are used to solve problems in various ways. They are getting creative about solving this specific issue, solving this specific challenge. They are usually pretty good in critical thinking in challenging things challenging processes, challenging rules. And they often tinker around with things, processes, rules, frameworks, whatsoever. And they are usually pretty good in exploring how things work. Because the overall target for a hacker is knowing it, and it can be a process can be an application, can be a rule set, better as the designer of it. 
But all of this is not a real skill set. It's a mindset. You need to adapt this as a mindset to be successful. Hacking is a mindset. It's not a skill set. You can learn it. You can learn to have this mindset. You can earn this mindset. But it's not a skill set. It's not based on a skill set. If you do have this mindset of problem solving, you can overcome technical issues with finding ways around. You can tinker around until you find the solution, even if it's a technical one. If you don't know how to use a lock and a key, you can tinker around and try it out until it works. And of course, exploring how things work is the ultimate target of being a hacker, because remember, you need to know things better as the designer of it. This is for me a pretty easy and comprehensive of what hacking really is. It's nothing bad, it's nothing evil, it's nothing we shouldn't do. It's a mindset. I encourage you to become and to get into it, to get used to that, to be curious, to try to things, uh, to try things out, to tinker around, to explore how things work. So let's do a couple of hacks together. The twins. This is most probably the very first hack you've ever experienced. When you go to school and you do have some twins in your classroom, do you really know who is who? Do you really know if this is Alice or Barbara? Do you really know if Alice is Alice or Barb is Barb? Or is Alice Barb or Barb is Alice? Twins are pretty good in playing these games usually and they can fool the teacher. They can fool parents. They can evade the rules with it. They can overcome obstacles like exams. Alice needs to do an exam, but is on sick leave. It's not prepared, but Barb is, so Barb can take it. This is a pretty, pretty easy, I think very common hack, but it's a pretty hard to understand hack if you are not aware that these are twins. There are movies about that. Um, there's a movie about a magician um, doing exactly that, doing a very nice trick to disappear and appear on a very different part of the room within seconds. Nobody is able to understand that because nobody knows that these are twins. And this is the way it goes. They know the system better. This magi magician knows the system better. He knows his audience. He knows that they assume he is not a twin because usually you do not assume that everyone is a twin, right? So he's using this advantage and doing magic with it. And yes, sometimes hacking seems to be magic to one or the other. But I don't want to blame only children or pupil with that, or magicians. There's a pretty nice example on Reddit um, saying that one of my engineer, engineering professors has an identical twin brother who's also an engineer. Every once in a while, class just doesn't flow well and the professor seems to forget what we have and haven't covered. Turns out he has his brother come in every once in a while to sub if he is sick or needs to do something. This professor is pretty smart. He is hacking the system. Or at least hacked, because now they know it. So his hack is discovered and he might not be able to use it anymore. And this is a pretty smart one if you don't know that they are twins. 
I tweeted about that um, today and also mentioned on LinkedIn, the prolonged furniture delivery. So usually if you go out and you go to um, store to buy some furniture, you go there, you select it, then you pack it on your, um, on your bag or you pack it in your bag and you go to the cashier, you pay for it, you leave, then you're arriving at home and um, at home you unpack it, you assemble it, and while you're assembling it, you're uh, understanding that some parts are missing. There's a screw missing or two or three. So you call the customer support and tell them, hey, there's a screw missing, I need the screw. Can you please send it to me? And the customer support is saying, yeah, of course, I'm so sorry that it's not there and we'll send it to you and um, please apologize. Okay, cool. Can we use that? Yes, we can. All these manuals of the furniture are usually available online. In all of these manuals, you do have a list of parts in there. And as this smart Twitter user figured out that only a fool would buy IKEA furniture, instead I just download the instructions and keep emailing their service department to say that I'm missing a piece until they ship me all the pieces over a six month period. This is a pretty clever hack. It takes a while, like six months, okay. But it's furniture for free until this got discovered by IKEA until they recognize that Jason is asking for each and every piece of this furniture and asking them to send it over for free because it's missing. What are we doing here? We're hacking, yes, but what? Are we hacking a computer? No. Are we hacking IKEA? Yeah, more or less. We're hacking people and processes. The system is flawed in that way that for the sake of customer support and customer satisfaction, they are sending out missing parts immediately for no charge. But they never thought about that situation that someone could misuse this example, that someone could misuse this process and as people, as humans, usually tempt to support others because we're social, we want to help, we want to support. We don't want anyone to be mad or sad about missing parts of furniture. Of course we support, of course we help, and of course we send out all the things he's asking for because he want, we want him to be a happy customer. So with that, we are hacking people and processes. Easy one, right? Let's talk about the hungry driver. This is a drive-through restaurant. Whatever you can think of, it looks like that. There's a sign on the street. There is this, um, this parking place where you just um, pass by and there are some places to act. The first part is that you place your order. You're saying, hey, I want to have five cheeseburger, two hamburger, some nuggets. Okay, thank you. Please proceed to the second window and uh, pay at the cashier desk. Okay, we'll do that. We move forward. Um, we talk to the one to the cashier. Hey, this makes sixteen bucks seventy eight. Uh, yeah, I pay by card. Yeah, okay, you pay by card. Uh, contact us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. COVID and so on and so on. Yeah, please wear a mask. Okay, thank you. Bye. And then your disposition. This is the pickup position where you get your food delivered. Right. You do not interact much with them because they are so used to this process that someone ordered and paid that they just hand out the menu to you, right? 
So summarized, at step one, we place the order. On step two, we do the payment. On step three, we collect our food. While we're doing step one, while we're placing the order at step one, and this is done and we proceed to step two, the order desk is sending the order to the cashier to make them aware that I need to pay 16 bucks 78 and to the handout station where they prepare my food, where they prepare my lunch or my dinner. So how can we exploit this process? At step one, what are we doing? And if you hear that sound outside, I'm sorry for that. There is some parade going on. I don't know why, um, but there seems to be some party. Maybe it's end of COVID and I just wasn't aware of that. So first step, you place your order. Ah, no, no, not today. Sorry, I just went through it. Um, yeah, I, uh, well, maybe, yeah. No, I don't want to um, waste your time. I, yeah, I do an order. I, ha I, I like to have five cheeseburgers, two hamburgers, and some nuggets. Okay, cool. Second step. You are asked to proceed uh, to the cashier desk, and at the cashier desk, um, there's a nice employee asking you, okay, how do you want to pay? Paper card, contact glass, wear your mask, please. And so tell them, yeah, you know, um, I thought I'm gonna order, but then I figured out I don't have any money with me. So I just need to go with the process and um, it'll be fine then. So thanks and sorry for the inconvenience. And have a great day, take care and wear a mask. Bye-bye. And step three, and this is now pretty interesting. They don't know that you never paid for it. There's no communication between step, step two and step three. They will hand out the food, you never paid for it, and you just leave. So what happened? Do we hack a system, computer system, an application program? No. Do we hack people? Mm, not really. It's not much the people could have done here. But the process, the process is flawed. And with knowing the process better than the people who designed it, knowing the process better than the people who are living it, you're in a good position. So you can or you could exploit the process because you understand that usually it must be a communication from the cashier desk to the last step where you hand out the food that this specific order, order number 300, got paid and that it's ready for delivery. But you know that this is not happening, so you can easily exploit that and get a lunch, get a meal for free. But why is this guy telling you about how getting a lunch or dinner for free, about furniture, getting furniture within the next six months? What is in for you? And why you should start hacking? So first and foremost, not to harm others. It's not supposed to get a meal for free or fooling others, blaming others. This is not why you should start hacking. But with developing that mindset, this hacking mindset, a hacker's mindset, you're getting way more creative way more interested in processes, designs, in things as mentioned at the beginning. And with doing all of that, 
you will be able to create more robust designs of everything. Be it a door at your house, be it a process at your restaurant, be it a process in your application, or be it your customer support, not sending out whatever the customers are asking for. And at least for me, with this hacking or hacker's mindset, solving problems is getting, especially for me, faster and even more fun. It makes more fun to understand the pros and cons of this process, the pros and cons of this solution or possible solution to find better ones, to, to find the ultimate one which is no one else able to exploit because you tried all of them in your head before. You can think like you created the ultimate lock nobody's able to unlock without this specific key. This is a pretty nice challenge. And with becoming a hacker's mindset, you help the world run better and improve people's life. Why? Why is that? Because you find ways around the things you've designed, the usual usage, the processes, the applications, the door at your house. It's more secure, it's more safe. The application you develop is more secure. The process you designed is more robust. And with that, the people around you and in your ecosystem are, of course, more secure. Because the process is more robust, you experienced or you tried out things you would never imagine people would try out. And with that, you can protect them from harm. And this is it, what all of this is about, protecting people from being harmed being exploited. With that, I'd like to close my monologue and would love to open this round for questions. If you've got questions, I hopefully got answers. If not, I'll do my very best to find them. And now we need to see chat. Is there any question? Oh, there's Philip. Hi, Philip. Hi, Philip. Thank you so much for this great presentation. Uh, actually, I I have a question. Maybe I can I can start the conversation for them for the moment. So what could be a nice approach if you you know if you have kids or if you teach kids what could be a nice approach to make make them aware of the benefits or again in general of the hacker's mindset and what a benefit could be what would be a nice approach so there are multiple ways to do that there are some um, games you can play with them you can find them ways around the rules to gain advantage out of them, which is usually the case with kids, right? Um, there's this famous card game, you know, where you have plus two or plus four cards and they love to put plus two on plus two on plus two on plus two to make you feel bad because you need to take six. They will teach you that this is the official rule set they will start to convince you that this is the official rule set. But unfortunately, it's not. There are some kind of bricks you can play around with and build something upon. There's a famous manufacturer, Lego, Lego bricks. You can start building prototypes with it, like, for example, the drive-in, the drive through You can ask them to find a way to get a meal for free. And 
honestly, usually kids are way better in finding these hacks than we adults are because they are used to it. Kids do bring all of these mechanisms by default. They are curious. They are tinkering a lot. They want to understand how these things work. They want to understand the things better than you do. They will annoy you with questions. Why is that? How can, you, can I do this? How does that work? And at some point in time, you just give up and you say, I don't know, but they are still not satisfied. So in my opinion, there's not much you need to do to bring kids into that direction. It's us that we need to accept that and we need to foster it. We need to support them and we should not stop them from exploiting these rules and not making them use of the plus two card um, and not let them play around with the process in Lego. So my recommendation is not to stop them and tinkering around but to empower them to do so. Of course, within the boundaries, right? We do have legal boundaries, as I said before, but in my opinion, these are the only boundaries we should give them. Right, Philip, I must say that I was super intrigued by the words you said that hacking is actually not a skill set, but a mindset. And the more I was thinking about it, the more it was getting to me and I was getting the sense of it. Uh, and my question uh, is, do you think that, is there any way that like ordinary people, we can we equip ourselves with that mindset? What can we do to, to get that hacker sense inside of us? Uh, in my opinion, it's pretty easy. Do not accept the answer as it is. Whatever answer you get to a process, to an application, to um, a drive-through, do not accept what people tell you in the first instance. Challenge it. Be curious. Try to understand what's behind. This is the only thing you need to do. Just ask yourself, okay, if I would do that, what would I've done better to avoid this or that? Or if I would have done that, how could I exploit that in a way that I gain more out of it? I said the twins are not doing it because they are mean, but they gain fun out of it, especially if these are kids. They can pass an exam, which they were never able before because they were sick or not knowledgeable enough. And the teacher did it just to deliver the class in case he's sick or not there. So it's not about the advantage you gain for yourself in general but it helps you to get into that mindset. And when you start developing that mindset and you start becoming curious about things, you can then divert it into the direction you wanted to, right? You want to make things better. This is at least my intention. I want to make things better, smoother, clever. Yeah, in various ways and I also want to understand the things, right? There are famous pictures online about a lock, for example, a door with a number lock. The number of the house is 3944. What do you think which numbers are pressed on the keypad? Three, nine, four. These are the prep numbers that are, yeah, used the most. And now it's on you. Is the code three, nine, four, four? Oh, maybe. Maybe it's four, four, nine, three, four, nine, three, four, 
and so on and so on. So to get behind the idea, to get behind the process, this is what, yeah, starts me, let me start thinking about things. And I can only share with you this appetite to learn about what's behind. Why is it like that? Why isn't it that way? I would have done it that way. Why is it that way? To understand what people tried to do. This is how I started with it. And um, yeah, foster your curiosity. There's no need to accept the state as it is. There's no need for it. Well, I must, I must agree with, with the words that Oliver wrote in the chat that you left us with some very interesting things to think about. Uh, I just think that if all of us uh, could like incorporate that hacker mindset, uh, it would be so beneficial because facing any, any problems and any new challenges at work, at home and your daily life uh, would be so much different with thinking twice about things. We're thinking twice about possible solutions. Yeah. Uh, that, that's really great. And guys, we, we are so fortunate to have Philip for a few minutes longer. So if you have any questions regarding today's uh, online seminar or hacking or anything that Philip mentioned today, just feel free. Okay, we have a question from Leon. Uh, would you say that hacking means the same as learning? No. So usually when people talk about learning, they talk about learning a specific topic for a specific reason, while hacking can lead you in various ways. It's way more open. Yes, at the end, of course, you learn something, but then we can also say um, smashing your thumb with a hammer is learning because you learn it hurts, but it's obviously not learning itself, right? Um, so learning for me is way more focused on learning a specific topic, gathering knowledge about a specific topic, while hacking is way more about exploring the things around and gathering um, knowledge about things you might have not discovered at this point in time when you started this, this journey. Hacking is, for me, a journey of understanding things. That's great. Uh, Christian wrote that for him, hacking has always been associated with something negative, uh, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of your, of your presentation. Yeah. And uh, this totally changed today, and I must agree. I think that you perfectly explain why hacking is not always a negative term and shouldn't be a negative term. Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. That's, that's I'm so glad to hear that. Christian, thanks for that. Um, it's pretty important to understand that hacking is not evil per se. Yes, there are some threat actors outside, especially in the world of IT. Um, we do have threat actors that are called hackers. We do have a movie that is called Hackers and is all about using IT systems. Yes, but this is not what hacking really is. It is the bad part the dark side of the moon of hacking it's not the bright side and yeah if you want to join darth vader please don't count on me if you want to join the rebellion then here i am <laughs> okay do we have any last questions to philip do not be afraid ask whatever you want why you have an expert here it's a great opportunity for that. Okay. It feels there's no question anymore. In case you do have questions, you want to discuss things or you're, I don't know, just interested in um, whatever we do here at SAP, whatever we do with Capture the Flag, whatsoever, um, you can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is Huxbard, as shown here. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Happy to connect. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for joining today. It was my pleasure.
and um, have a great and we like to day. thank you philip for 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 that lecture for the class You're welcome. i think it was super inspiring and and uh, in something life-changing i would say and uh, also <laughs> especially a big uh, thank you to all of you guys to our uh, meet and code audience meet and code community for your time and attention this afternoon uh we've enjoyed hosting you and i hope that you walk away feeling a bit more inspired and motivated uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the next Meet and Code online seminar, which is tomorrow. Uh, so just remember to keep checking our social media to stay updated. Thank you again for being here with us today. Thank you, Philip, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.